Welcome to the Unfiltered Path Podcast, where we explore life's journey without the constraint of filters. In a world saturated with highlight reels, we dive deep into the true essence of individual experiences, offering listeners an uncensored glimpse into the triumphs, struggles, and transformative moments that define us. Our mission is to provide hope, inspire resilience, and remind you that every path, no matter how windy or rocky, can lead to growth and enlightenment. Join us as we navigate the uncharted territories of truth, and to be moved, be inspired, and discover that you're not alone on this unfiltered journey of life. Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Duval. I am the owner of Valued Productions. My company works to produce and implement Video marketing strategies helping uh, businesses turn strangers into clients using video content and social media. Joined with my awesome co-host today. Hey everyone, Trinity Baker. I'm a mindset coach and motivational speaker. I teach people to use the most powerful tool that they have, their mindset, to create the life that they love and learn that they can create the life that they love all with just their mindset. And I'm joined here with my awesome co-host. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle. I'm the owner of Ariel Jade. I'm an aerialist. That's a fancy term for performing suspended in the air. Essentially, I'm the bird of the circus. uh, And I am a globally certified intermediate advanced instructor, which is its own title. And so I happily teach other people to be like me. Um, And we are here with our wonderful guest today. Hi, everyone. Michelle Fox, um, Fox Carpentry and General Contractors. We're out of Southern Maine. um, And what we do, I own the business with my husband. And we we renovate um, small businesses. We renovate homes. We build custom homes. And um, pretty much do everything that's transforming your living space into something more beautiful or your working space. Um, so yeah, that's we we started our business um, in Portland when we moved to Portland from Massachusetts. Well, I'm from Massachusetts. My husband's from London, and um, we're really excited to be here and starting a family business again. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I'm so intrigued. So all of us are just now meeting Michelle. Okay, so here's what I, I know. Find that's ever happened. I think. Yeah. yeah. How did we get? How did we get that booking? If I, if we're all just listen, it's B and I. The power of B and I. B and I brings oh, us. Oh, okay, that explains it. it. Is literally like this big giant connection for. I mean, like knowing her. Yeah. Well, I think that I think Michelle needs to be on here because I'm excited. She says that she has a really unique journey, and I know she does because what I know so far is that she is clearly family oriented. She's from Massachusetts. Her husband's from London, and she is a form of ballet dancer and her arm muscles oh. are gorgeous <laughs> she looks like a model so if you're not here watching <laughs> the first thing I was like oh my gosh this woman is so beautiful <laughs> I'm gonna make up for you all yeah well <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself how did you go from ballet to carpentry yeah ballet to business ballet yes, to business I get it. As, <laughs> as a clarification I am not a carpenter. Um, my husband has been in carpentry and home building for 25 years. But um, I, my background was that I was um, a ballet dancer and then I was a ballroom dancer and I taught adults to ballroom dance for a few years. We're talking way back, like early 20s. Um, from there, I started <laughs> becoming interested in my... Um, in, in business and, and the business. So a lot of people who are in the performing arts, I'm sure, um, yeah, Jade can, can speak to this. There's not training for how to have a studio or for how to run a business. Um, that's nowhere really near what is offered. So I started working for um, Fred Astaire Franchise. And that's where I learned a lot about business and then educated myself through the years that I felt confident to um, own studios of my own uh, manage and then own and so my husband and I have actually we sold our dance studio so we had a ballroom dance studio where we had teachers that taught um, people how to ballroom dance and dance for their weddings 
um, super fun business. It was wonderful while I did it. Um, I became a mom and said, no, one of us can't be going, you know, in the evening anymore, teaching people how to teach ballroom dancing. So, um, so we sort of were very intentional with the pandemic about, um, we have this business, it's completely shut down. Mm. Where do we go from here? Um, we knew we wanted to start a family. And I think one of the really important things is choosing um, Portland, Maine. Just it's a place that's always been really close to my heart. And I knew that my husband would love it because he's we're, we're small city people. Um, everything that Portland has, it's like everything. Um, the community is it's not like London, but there were the things that he was looking for from London. We found that here. So, um, yeah, we we moved here and sort of um, said, OK, well, we don't have a, a dance studio anymore. What what business are we going to do? Um, our first project was renovating the Hunwell Shepley Mansion um, in downtown Portland. And that was what we did together more, more or less. I mean, I, you know, worked on the business and um, marketing and all that side of it. And he actually did the work <laughs> and <laughs> laying the floor and everything. Um, and we love that experience. And so we, we thought, well, this has been something that's part of our lives and let's make this our, our full-time business. So yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> What, uh, what intrigues you so much about business? Tell me, tell us a little more about that. Yeah, I think small business is a little bit of a revolution. Mm -hmm. I think it's what um, our culture needs because it really gives people so many more choices for their future, so much more power of what they do about their lives. And, you know, I'm not knocking, like I've never worked for corporate America and I know people who are really super happy uh, working for their companies for many years, which is amazing. But there's something about small business that isn't really supported in society. And so to do it, you kind of have to go against all odds, which I think is completely admirable. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you kind of make your mark and it's it's what people love about places. When you think of a place like mm -hmm. Portland, why people love it is because, it's not because of Walmart, although it's convenient, it's because of small businesses. It's because of the story that goes behind everyone's passion and everyone's contribution to the community. Mm. We're so lucky to have you. <laughs> oh, you're just the house of talent. I love that. I am so quoting that today, that being a small business owner is a, what, how'd you word it? It's it's like it's a, a, bit, a revolutionary move. Yeah, how'd you word it? A revolutionary it, move? Yeah, it's like a, I mean, not to, you know, it's like it a- It is though. And it is not, that's the word it I'm is. And it it's is. not, it's, it's not, it's not um promoted greatly. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I'll be honest, just getting loans or help or even in taxes, it's, um, you know, they just assume I had a W-2. <laughs> and so um, my year, my business is turning five and now people have to listen to me. That, and that's what I'm realizing, because now it's like now I have enough background, like, you know, like now I finally like it they'll like the outside world will hear us but until your business is a little bit older like I really feel like yeah it's not exactly paved out for us is what I mean there's always some extra steps you know it, it it's definitely not designed all the time for us <laughs> yeah, and even when you think that there's like a clear path there's not a clear path uh, like all these things I love what you said Michelle is like there's nothing to teach you the business aspects of ballroom dancing, of Ariel, of or no owning a studio, it's you Maybe. because like yeah. I have to find people to teach me, you know. And I had some education, and my Ariel leader is a leader for a reason, but it's still not the same. It's still not main, 
you know, she's in Los Angeles. What does she know about the main network? Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. So like, it can only go so far. Um, even her studio approach is totally different than what Maine needed as a structure. And I had to make mine traveling because of COVID made me very aware that my business structure were the first ones to go. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> But we're privately sought now higher than ever. So that's why Kelly from BNI taught me. And she told me that my genre and like ser home servicing, so cleaning, cooking, any type of like direct service like that or carpentry, for example, mm -hmm. and myself, we're actually the highest sought after companies now after COVID. So that's a really we have interesting approach mm -hmm. that we're all ready for it because the market's prepped for us, but it is humbling to know we're the first to go <laughs> if the the financial structure is a little shaky. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. I think some of the challenge is like the trades, for example, people know they're really good at something. And so they say, I'm really good at this. Uh, you know, I'm an excellent plumber. I'm an excellent carpenter. Why don't I do that for a living? I love it. And it's great. But there's such a difference when you're talking about now making it like a small business sooner mm -hmm. or later, you don't have the, the skills to market yourself, to budget accordingly, to network, to figure out who are your clients, you know, and who you should be working with. And so a lot of people, I feel like a lot of tradespeople um, struggle because they know they're good at something, but Everyone, the outside world expects them to make it a small business that's instantly viable. Um, so that's one of the things that we really want to bring to our company is the, the skills and knowledge to not just do the trade. But if there's if there's interest, you know, customer service and, um, you know, all of the all of the skills that you need to be a small business owner or entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Everything. The networking part is um, huge. Like sometimes you have to like take an opportunity like yesterday. Um, I only follow one celebrity one and it's because my, I named my son Ja. So I follow one of Bob Marley's grandsons to, so my son knew where the origin of his name was and literally a hundred people on TikTok and this dude is one of them. Well, he is in Portland and I was like, I'm going. And I don't even know how I knew. And I was like, but I'm going. And I offered to perform for free. And they were like, well, why don't you just try to win tickets? We can't do that. It's a smaller, kind of more intimate Q&A event. And I was like, oh, my God, even better. I have questions. <laughs> so um, I won tickets and I went. And this man has his bus my business card in his pocket today. today. Like, he's just oh. It's probably not his pocket anymore as they were his pants last night. But that's <laughs> networking. Like, I was there. And yeah, I, had I, had question. I had question ready. Like, you know, he knows who I am in his brain because I had a great question. And, you know, like, and it was smart because I started doing stand up while I'm doing aerial and I was running out of breath. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it's awesome. You know, a 15 minute act. I'm I got a solid all me 15 minute act like that's cool. Right. And um, but I was like panting, trying to make people laugh. And it was hard. So I asked him what type of breath work he does and like what type of exercises he does to prepare for his shows. And he says he runs to and he sings Billie Jean. So any type of cardio, whether he's kicking a soccer ball or whatever, he's singing that song because of something with the pace or whatever. I'm not even sure if he said it, but my brain came up. Singing that. while he's his heart rates increase while he's doing cardio. It will literally, yeah, that's beautiful. That is really, yeah. but that's like, networking. That's being a small business owner. Like that's like the shit that like, that was worth getting a babysitter for. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, that's, I'm going. And then the odds, like I don't follow celebrities like that. So it was just like, okay, he tours. I own a rig. Like this is logical. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. and he comes to me. They come to Maine. Like that family and the roots have always, growing up, you could always get one of their concerts. Damien Marley have seen multiple times at Beats. They come to Maine. They love Maine. So I was just like, oh my God, this is my moment. Like, I, would, I even if it's nothing really happens from it, but the fact that I like the radio station picked me, I got to ask the question. It was just small business owner swag, the whole moment. Like that's what that was. That's how everything is in small business though. Like it's the little wins that we build on. They're like 
it's the big elephant one bite at a time. It's 10 floors Mm -hmm. at a time, right? So, and I think that that's like the most important thing that I see about business is we all have this vision. We all have this dream. We want to be big. We want to do big things. We have, we're all here because we want to make an impact in whatever way we make an impact and in ripple in this world. But we have to hone in that want and that desire that we so want to explode out of us yeah. and take one step at a time. And oftentimes it's little steps like that, that we don't even know about, like a move to Portland, a BNI meeting, going to a certain event, meeting with a certain person. Like when I met Graham, I had no idea that he was going to mm. teach me media to market a business that I didn't even have at that point. Mm. <laughs> I like what you said, Michelle, about uh, dialing in like who your customers are, uh, because that is just such a key piece in like business that you're right. I mean, I, I deal with a lot of businesses and that's literally like one of the number one things that that, that people aren't really keeping in mind because there's a couple different ways to like dial in who your customers are, whether it's through like your process or like the way you serve, or if it's actually like a group of people, like whether it's like, I, for example, like if I say I just help dentists and like we help all dentists, like there's a couple different ways, but until you have that focus, it doesn't even matter. You know, well, like, it just doesn't help because you have to have that tip of an arrow and you're going after that one tip, but that doesn't mean that you can't still help other people as they kind of flood in. You still have to have that focus. Mm -hmm. I feel like it takes years to know who your customer is though. Like for me, it took a couple of years for me to even be like, be like, Oh, there's a pattern here. You know, like the pattern, that's the thing. The pattern will come, but you still, you can early on, determine who that is that you want like who would be the best ideal fun to work with and then as those people flow in then you start to recognize those patterns and it may have a complete shift like oh wait a minute i wanted to work with these people but this is actually way easier okay you've you've worked with 10 of these people you know like okay let's make that shift then you double down on that and that's where you can like scale that visibility uh, through your marketing and connections and everything like that. That is literally what BNI teaches us. You guys want to hear like the coolest piece of gold that Graham taught me. I thought it was last week or week before. A niche does not need to be a person. It can be a process. How many, like I, there are so many businesses that feel like oh. I do. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. right? So here, here's, here's, hear me out. There's so many businesses that feel like I do that we want to help everyone. Mm-hmm. We want, we are so passionate about what we do that we want to help everyone, right? And we don't want to niche down because then we're leaving out the people who we know we want to help. So Graham's like, well, what if your niche is not a person? What if your niche is your process? Mm-hmm. And like a total mindset shift for the mindset coach. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> oh, I just got schooled my own shit. And so, <laughs> yeah, no, that makes absolute sense because the person doesn't matter, but the type of women that keep showing up and failing, that's what matters. So exactly. it's not, I don't identify my clients by a body type or something. There seems to be a profession pattern but um, you can dial that in a little bit down the road, even. Yeah, but, like nurses, yeah. care, like um, people that have been in offices for a really long time, like like been in one job for a long time. They just keep showing up for themselves. They just don't care mm-hmm. to like. They're okay with failing, and they're probably usually not even the best when they show up, and they're the first, right? But they keep showing up for themselves, and poof, they're my student assistant, or poof. You know, it's just what it is. And it's remarkable. But so labeling, it's the process of showing up, right? Exactly. And labeling yeah. it as something. So like, okay. this is the aerial jade process, um, like extravagant, like X, Y, Z <laughs> thing. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, like a name for it. You know, like I, mean, I use the authority accelerating system, you know, and yeah. really what it is, okay. is social media and video content. But 
I've got this name and I can help a lot of people, but my niche is this process that I do it, uh, do it with. So if you think about like Michelle, for example, again, I really like Michelle, I, I want to get to know you so much more than these past 32. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. I, oh, woo, so much. I'm so, I'm so grateful for this connection. But if you think about what Fox Carpentry does, for example, you just said that we help renovate businesses. That is the whole vibe. That is a whole energy. If you don't feel good about the space that you're doing business in and you're serving your clients in whatever the industry is, I don't care what the industry is. That is a niche. That is a process. You are bringing them Mm -hmm. to their highest level energetically in their space. And then it allows them to step into their greatest potential and help they serve. That is a niche right there. Yeah. And, and that, the the way to niche that down is like when you do it with the people you, it's like, it's all dentists or all doctors or whatever, you know, but you, when you do it as the process, you do need to label it some something, you know, mm-hmm. because that's going to be the thing that defines what that niche is, is some sort of like name. Uh, mm-hmm. So that is the key piece to when you're doing it through the process. That's great. And I, I do agree that it takes takes a little while. Um, we're in that process, I think, right now, you know, like we do want to help everybody, but sometimes when people come to us and say, you know, can you just make this look okay? Structurally, I know it has issues, but I don't want to deal with that. Um, Just make sure it looks okay. That's, I think early on, we had to identify, no, that's not our process. Mm. (laughs) So therefore that can't be our client. So, you know, if you have anything like stairs that are not structurally sound, we're not touching them until we can do it really properly. We're so that's, you know, a great example. And I love that because you're right. It could be anybody and right. Not It's not about the person. It's about, you know, what we do is we want to, we're going to do it properly. And that, yes, All that right. might take longer than making it look okay for the next year, but it's our name behind it. So it has to last and it has exactly. to be what we're proud of. Exactly. I love that. that. This is why we all love being business owners because it is our name. You know, regardless of whether your name is your business, your business is your name. You are, you are your business. And so it is our stamp on everything that we do, everything we say, everything we do, every client we help. It is our name. And that is the total vibe. We talked about this on uh gosh, on the cruise, on the BNI cruise. I was talking to someone, and it is really gutsy to put your name on stuff and that's that's a type of confidence and guts that you've got to have as a business owner say i'm putting my name on this especially knowing you can't control it all once it's not just you doing right. it obviously right. you know, my name is my husband's name but neither of us are the that well i don't do the carpentry but you know we have wonderful employees that we thank goodness we trust you know to say yes you understand what what our name stands for, what type of customer service we're going out there. And we're only hiring the people that we can go, yeah, you're, you know, we're not, you're not in the Fox family, but you're kind of in the Fox family now. <laughs> Fox yeah. stamp. It's a Fox stamp. That's what I see with a lot of my clients too. My clients are amazing, right? They're always writing like testimonials without me asking, like all over social media, they'll be like, you know, I'm doing this and I'm feeling this way, but that's like, my my stamp is mm. the people who are just living what I believe and I teach, which is when you harness the power of your mindset, your life changes. So they're going and posting like, you know, I'm the healthiest I, I have ever been. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm stepping into this new career. I'm starting this new business. I just hired six new people. Like that is the stamp that we're we're on. Like Michelle, like your stamp is beautiful places that you're doing, right? Whether homes, businesses, staircases, like whatever it is, right? Like we all have stamps. Danielle, your stamp is an amazing woman who thinks that she can't get up on a lira and now she's hanging upside down. That's your stamp, right? I love right. profile yeah. pictures. Of yeah. Like lira. That's yeah. like thing. Graham, your stamp is a thriving business owner. Like when I come across social media and I can point out a video that Graham's done without knowing yeah. the business, about seeing valued productions. I'm like, Graham, 
I can too. I can too. That's funny. I can. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely can. It's yeah. the coolest thing to see our names be like into stand. I mean, they're just, ah, uh, it's just the coolest. Yeah. It's yeah, cool. I mean, that's the brand, that's your brand. And like developing that has so much more longevity in business growth than anything else, because that's that trust that like the reason why Apple is like, it's a tech company, but it it's almost like a lifestyle company. You know what I mean? It's a like a status kind of thing. And so like when you can dive into that as your brand and it does take time, you know, cause you need to have enough people who've used you and you've had trust built and like recognition, not just like recognition of like awards, but like, like brand recognition of, Oh yeah, that, that is one of those videos or that is clearly uh you know uh, ariel or whatever or, or a, that's a staircase done by fox or whatever you know so yeah i i think that's the ultimate legacy that you can build through business I, to a certain degree that's what i think is also a little bit revolutionary because mm, yes. we're in an era that has the whole world is owned by huge companies yes you know and here we are relatively tiny and sort of putting something unique out into the world Love and that. yeah i mean culturally i think it is it's yeah most definitely no, sure. i think that's and if you think about like you said on. michelle corporate america is needed there are people who thrive in the setting of corporate america thank god for them we all have our unique abilities and capabilities and focus and gifts and they're there, we need banks, we need grocery stores, we need box stores. Like there are things that we need. We need gas stations. We need on there has to be a corporate America umbrella that, that oversees all of these things. And so we need those people. Those people are in their place and they thrive. But what do you do when you feel like you're not thriving in that place? Small business ownership is typically that step, right? Find out what you want to do, what ripple you want to make and make it into a business. And you know, all four of us right here are perfect examples of doing that. And it's not an easy straight method. Well, something to be said for what you just said. I love how you were delicate with that because uh, yesterday I was in an obnoxiously long line and I couldn't help but notice that it was obnoxiously long because I was there when all the other business owners were buying an absurd amount of pickles. You know, he's a business owner. Like, like with absurd amounts of napkins. Like the, it was, I was looking around and I was like, is this when business owners go shopping? And and it's true. We have to have that place, to, you know? So I just love how you worded that. Like, if you're not thriving in that, because I'm, I'm kind of making a partnership with a bigger company that has yeah. a nice umbrella. Uh -huh. And so it's nice to kind of like celebrate that. If I need that security as like, I'm like, oh, give me something that's a pattern that I can rely on, you know, like, because corporate American kind of offer that sometimes when just kind of finding all of your own clients all the time is just really exhausting. Um, For sure. It's nice oh, having yeah. that balance and celebrating that we can thrive in one location. But if you're not happy doing that, it's probably because you should be self-employed and a part of a revolution. It takes a certain type of grit and person. You just have to like an ex-ballerina to come and be like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> this and you're a business owner I have so many questions about owning a studio in fact like but I'm so unconventional so I love that you offer such an array of information um you might want to tap into that a little bit because like I don't know you don't only have to manage your husband's business yeah yeah no but that's that's about that's the business ownership and the brand of it is Michelle if you have knowledge on how to open how to how to be a studio owner, how to open it, how to successfully run it. Like you could easily teach people in a course. Oh or my in gosh. <laughs> I'm telling you, telling digital you, products, like a, digital products I, all day long. Passive all income. Towards it. All day. I'm because to like figure out how to love and nurture the brand, but give step back a bit. I'm yeah. trying to figure out how because, that works. Because we are going 
we are golden goose. Like we have to protect ourselves and there's only so much that we can give. So how can we affect more people? How can we give bigger impact with less energy coming from us? Yep. Right and now, true. the online education industry is a it's it's been around for a little bit, but it's still fairly in its infancy. And by like 2027, it's going to be like this major, major industry. And so getting in on digital products, create a course on how to build your studio from the ground up and make it successful you still run Fox uh, Carpentry and then you've got this like community course that you can sell on the side, make some extra income. Uh, th really this is the type of stuff that like, gets me excited. <laughs> I like that. I, it's, I mean, I, I almost um, was involved with doing that in a franchise situation um, because I used to be in charge of um, the New England region and helping people open and run you know, their own spaces, their mm. own studios. Um, so teaching ad adults is, is super what I, what I love to do. Um, and also I want to challenge myself to build another type of business really well. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be like it. it because that's, that's all about business ownership is like what skills and passions do you have? Make it a business. How can you make an impact with it? Make it a business. Is it one-on-one -on -one coaching of people who are creating studios? Is it a course that you sell and then they hire you as a coach when they want one-on-one -on -one to help? Like you can do that. And I think that that's the most beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur at heart versus a business owner is be free with what you're doing. It doesn't have to match. It can be carpentry in studios. They have nothing to do with each other, but guess what? They have huge impacts and you have passion for them. Yeah. I met a woman recently and I felt a responsibility to help her because she was opening a pole studio. And I literally was like, oh my God, I had to tell her everything I knew that was like she could learn from. It was just like the, it was such an impulse urge. And I've been literally, that's what I've been doing. And like, I just feel so great about it. And, and then I met Alma, who I am like that to her. I'm like, how are you getting people to pay you when they don't show up? And how do you have this online all mapped out so beautifully? And like, and then, so I have to revert to that, but I know how to run the business insurance, um, you know, how many clients you can have per hour legally in an apparatus. I don't think she was aware of that. <laughs> like, you know, like I was really like informed in terms of Ariel, like very, very informed. So I was, I felt the urge to help her. I was like, Oh my God, because there's only so many small business owners, especially yeah. studios. We're running off a of pure passion here. There's not money. <laughs> Powered by it is. I'm not limiting myself. Yeah. But Powered by passion. That's the difference. Yeah entrepreneurship is that we're powered by passion not money the money is needed the money will come the money will be there but we're really powered by the passion because we yeah. go long time without seeing the revenue come in yeah yeah you must yeah. wait for checks carpentry that's like long extended so how do you do that so do you do a portion in the beginning like how do you protect yourself as um, a business owner and there's a lot of carpenters that are not great in Maine because that's just what men do when they're figuring stuff out I feel like everybody yeah. in my family's been a carpenter once even myself included I've roofed I've tiled yeah we do things around here <laughs> yeah no I mean there's a difference between you know being a carpentry and, and building contracting company and just sort of doing it well yourself lots of people have the skill um but when you're talking about making a business you you have to know what's you know what's fair what's going to build trust with your clients so to answer your question we have we have a 25 to 30 percent down you know to reserve us for the for the project, um, we try and we're trying to we try and be as accurate as our estimates as possible. Um, and sometimes people just want a number; they just want like a number right away. But the thing is, in our business, that's it's not gonna you're gonna tell someone what they want to hear, but it's not gonna end up being close to the number that you get at. Mm. So we don't, you know, we don't want to do that. We we might take our time doing an estimate, but um, we should be pretty, you know, pretty in the ballpark, obviously barring like, oh, we, you know, tore out your wall and the whole thing is rotten. And, you know, we need to, 
to fix that. Right. But um, and yeah, definitely managing the cash flow is a whole different scenario. It's a whole different situation, you know, juggling different jobs, different timelines, those crazy things that come up that you can't control. And now you've got a job that's taking three weeks longer and you've got other ones that you need to fit in. So that's, um, and I'm just glad that I'm mapping because that's yeah. kind of, that feels more accurate. Yeah, I've I, heard I don't too. know how people do it when they don't have someone to do that. That's, I think, what also gives a lot of people who say that they're carpenters, not a bad name, but they might be good at it. But how do they, they just promised they would be here. And then now this person That's... has three weeks wow. left and they just don't show up. And people are like, oh my gosh, you know, can you believe they didn't show up? I'm like, I can believe it. Yeah, something happened. Yeah, she's like, yes. They don't have another person to get on the phone like we do. Like I can get on the phone and say, hey, let's figure this out. You know, it's, they're all trying to do everything at once. So yeah, I hear there's even like potential legislation being talked about for like the that industry because there's a lot of people who just like chase that deposit and then don't show up and there's, you know, and it's great to see like solid business like Fox Carpentry doing the right thing. You know, I work with a, a builder right now and, and that's like one of the things that we're focusing on in our videos is like, there's this huge gap in this this industry as far as like people who are actually doing it, which is few and far between. And then the the uh, like you said, Danielle, the the person who's just like looking for some extra cash to do carpentry on the side and they're just chasing the deposit and then they don't show up. And then, it, you know, and it's it, like it gives the industry like not such a good name. Exactly. They like good at they do, but, you know, we're but part of our mission at, at at our company is really to revitalize the pride and prestige that comes with working in the trades because it's such a craft. It's such an art, you know, these people, they have everything to offer. Um, especially, you know, the ones that aren't doing it really for the quick money, they're doing it because it's like, it's their art, it's their passion, right. making it right. And finding those people and giving them a good supported um, career to grow with is what we aim to do. And it's mm. definitely needed in Maine. So true. Oh, yeah. This summer I got prepaid for, it was a, okay, it's like a highlight of my profession. So I got prepaid for six performances and I got injured. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> and I still showed up. There was still, you know, I had um, students that performed for me once because it was like right after. I was like, oh, my God. So I, it was nice because it, one, put me in a position to highlight people, which is a goal I've always wanted to do. So it just kind of forced me to make that decision right then. But it was just such an opportunity as a business owner to, one, be so grateful for the money, be so grateful for the gates. But, hey, guess what? Life's not perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, it taught me so much as a business owner, but I showed up, there was something. And uh, fortunately my business is strong enough and my students and I've expanded big enough where there was someone great to be there. And as long as I'm there in face and they were getting their education with their children, it was beautiful. But yeah, I got injured midway and I was prepaid. So you get what you want. There's a lot of the timelines, right? Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful way too, because performances pop up for me and but they're kind of how one I give for free or two how I get paid in a way that I actually provide for my business so I can be an educator essentially mm -hmm. how I'm looking at it um, I love how you said it's layering timelines because as a business owner it's not just picking the date you know, it's, it's, it's a span of time. It takes me time to create that one routine for those six shows. So, so it's timeline. Yeah. There's so much structure that goes into everything that we do, right? Yeah. You've video, you've got to edit it. Then you've got to structure the timeline of releasing it, making sure it's released at certain times and certain dates. And then like everything with carpentry, everything has, like, I just scored a gig for speaking in December, like there's a lot of prep that's got to happen before December. So that's what we get paid for is our expertise on how to structure it professionally and accurately. Mm -hmm. yes! Exactly. Oh my God, the shit that people don't see. No. <laughs> and, and I think that. We're around other entrepreneurs and we're all bowing at each other. Like <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is just expecting us to do it effortlessly. Right. 
And I, and I think that's for, we hope for our listeners that that basically can kind of give some, some motivation that maybe if you have a side hustle or a passion that you're looking to turn into a business, it, it is doable and that you can be part of this revolution, uh, as Michelle said, in small business, especially here in, in Maine and wherever. Um, so hope our listeners enjoy some of that motivation uh, to join this revolution and that the Unfiltered Path podcast can be a catalyst for that. So again, my name is Graham, owner of Valued Productions. We provide video marketing strategies. You can find me at V A L U D productions.com and same thing on all social medias at valued productions michelle it's been great having you on today uh joined with my co-host today hey everyone trinity baker i'm a mindset coach and motivational speaker you can find me at my website the trinitybaker.com or on all social media platforms the trinity baker go follow me for some inspiration on how you can use and start to harness power of your mindset to change your life Join here with my co-host. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle. I'm the owner of Ariel Jade. I'm an aerialist. Uh, a lot of my content uh, includes being a mom, uh, a performer myself, and highlighting my students. Uh, I am a location point for the homeschooling network, so you'll find a lot of information on independently training yourselves and your peers around you. Uh, arieljade.com, Ariel Jade something, it's just Ariel Jade or Ariel Jade Art. And we're here with our guest today. Hi, Michelle Fox, Fox Carpentry and General Contracting. We build custom homes and workspaces and renovate them to make them beautiful. You can find us at fox-carpentry.com. And we're located right in Portland. Um, we do all kinds of home and business projects for about an hour's radius of Portland. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. This was amazing. Yes. Awesome. Thank you all for listening and tuning into the Unfiltered Path podcast. Make sure you follow and like and all that subscribe stuff. Uh, and we'll see you all next week on the Unfiltered Path podcast.